this is Julie Hoag with Vegetarians and Meat Lovers Split Table Recipes. Do you have a vegetarian family member or friend? Or do you sometimes like meatless meals, but then other people in your family like meat? Well, I am for you then, because that's what I do. My family is composed of a vegetarian, which is me, and four meat eaters. I'm the cook. I have figured out many ways to cook for both diets, and I've been doing it for, I don't know, something crazy like 27 years or something like that. I'm almost 50. I am 49, and I've been cooking this way since I was a teenager. I was, I became, for um, unfortunate events, I became the cook of my family as a teenager, and I was already a vegetarian. So I've literally been cooking this way since I was a child, a teenager. So I have things to share. I have a couple of books out there. I have One Dish, Two Diets, which is a cookbook. Very simple Midwestern recipes for cooking for a split table diet family of vegetarians and meat eaters. And it also has just some meatless recipes as well. And I also have a quiche cookbook, which is the same way, and American Midwest Cooking Quiches, split table recipes for vegetarians and meat lovers, where I have a whole bunch of different interesting, unusual quiche recipes, and it is in Kindle and paperback. And my other book, One Dish, Two Diets, is in multiple formats, actually. Kindle, audiobook, which you get a free ebook if you get that, and hardcover and paperback. I just put it out in, in hardcover. So check me out if you like what I do. And I'm working on a new one, which one of the recipes that I'm going to talk about today is actually going to go in that book. It's going to take me a while. It takes a while to make a cookbook because you have to you know, make the recipes multiple times, and then you have to take pictures. So it, it really takes, I mean probably a year at the least, a year to two years even possibly. So appreciate your cookbooks because (laughs) you have to like do all this work and it takes a really long time. And so the next one I'm doing is going to be pasta salads or salads and breads. So this is going to be a pasta salad that I'm going to have for today's podcast episode. But I'm really excited about this day. So like sometimes I don't plan things ahead of time. I'll decide it like within I decided what I was going to do on this podcast within 30 seconds of waking up. (laughs) My brain works when I'm sleeping, apparently. I wake up and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Does that happen to you? I don't know. Some people say their brains work when they're like in the shower or they're working or not working. No, no, definitely not working, but driving or um, something mundane, taking a shower, driving somewhere, something where your brain is occupied by something else. And then all of a sudden, I get ideas in the shower all the time. It's like my brain is free from doing something complex. So then it like thinks. And same thing with sleeping. So anyway, that's the crazy thing about how I thought of what I was going to do for this podcast episode. And the interesting thing is one of these recipes is from a very old cookbook, Betty Crocker's New Outdoor Cookbook. Now, this is a really old cookbook. And I'm going to look up. Let's see. This was made by General Mills, interestingly, in Minneapolis, Minnesota where I'm from. (laughs) Actually, I'm north of St. Paul. But copyright 1967. 1967. This cookbook is a little hardcover spiral bound cookbook that was my mother's. And I remember as a child looking at this book, it's kind of one of those, it's really old school looking. The pictures are obviously from that era. It's so interesting to look at. But one of our favorite, well, not mine, because I don't eat meat. One of my family's favorite marinades is from this book. And it is so simple. And my husband loves this. He's used it for pork and for chicken. And so it's called the soy garlic marinade. It is so simple. It only has six ingredients. And it is just, they love it. We've made it so many times. I don't eat, I couldn't even count how many. It's well in, it's got to be at least... 60, 75 times we've made the recipe so many times and we've given it to guests and they love it too. So that's coming up. And then the other one is I have a recipe for a pasta salad, which is called tomato fennel pasta salad. Now I am really weird about fennel. I've always like kind of been turned off by fennel. It's kind of licorice It's kind of weird flavor. But when I mix it with the right combinations. I absolutely love it. And I made this pasta salad recently. It's one of my new creations. And I knocked it out of the park. I love it. My husband loves it. My kids love it. And it's got fennel in it. So 
fennel and tomato. And then the last recipe I'm going to mention is one that I also made up that I absolutely love too. And this one is for a mushroom, marinating a portobello mushroom. So this could be an entire meal for you. It has vegetables, it has grains in the pasta, it has meat if you want meat, all of those things. And often when we are grilling some sort of meat, I might have a a marinated portobello mushroom that gets grilled so that I can have something grilled as well. And you can put it on a bun, you can eat it by itself. So those are the three recipes that I'm going to do today. And I'm really excited to get into the meat of this. (laughs) Is that funny for me to say on this podcast? Not really. I mean, I talk about meat too. So I'm not just a vegetarian podcast because that's not my life. I am not just a vegetarian cook. I am cooking on both sides of the spectrum from vegetarian. Sometimes I even do vegan things all the way up to flat out meat. So, you know, that's just my life. And that's how I am portraying this podcast. And my cookbooks are the same way. And my website, which is juliehogwriter.com, which also I'm going to do a mini plug of my book, Hungry Hearts. If you like YA romance with a lot of drama and edgy stuff and sweet love, get my book, Hungry Hearts, and give me a review. I am trying to grow my base of reviews for that book as well. Reviews help people so much. And if you love a book, Putting a plug out there, do a review for the author. It is so rewarding for the author to see. Even if you're doing some criticism, be honest. It really helps the writer grow, the author, and it helps actually boost the book in the Amazon world, right? If it gets reviews and purchases, it just, it boosts it up and it Amazon might suggest it to other people. So it helps the book grow. So take a few minutes and review your favorite books today. Honestly, as an author and a writer, I'm telling you, it is huge to do for someone. It makes such a difference and it really makes their day to hear what someone thinks, even if it is a critique. Okay, so little mini plug there for what you can do to help your favorite author, your favorite book, get more exposure, something simple that you, and it doesn't have to be a long involved review. It can be really short. It takes just a few minutes of your time. It's it's gold. Okay, so we're going to talk about this marinade. So this book, I'm looking at it. Oh, my gosh, it is so old. It's like fun. It's like totally nostalgic. I mean, you'll look at it and it looks it looks like pictures from the 60s, right? It totally does because it was made back then. And it's just fun to look at it. It's got so many different recipes in it. And I just found one flipping through here trying to find my marinade recipe that I want to try for kebab. So that's next on my radar. I'm going to do that one real soon, baby. It's going to be fun. Okay. The soy garlic marinade. I'm going to start with that. And in the recipe, it says for pork, beef, chicken, a sauce with character. Okay. We've used it for pork and chicken. And now I'm looking at it. I'm like, why haven't we tried it with beef? I don't know. We'll have to do that. Anyway, so this is so simple. I mean, this is like so simple. And we usually put it on minimum of a, we've done as little as a half hour, but I think the longer you do it, the better. An hour or two was fantastic. So you're going to take, and I do this for like maybe four pork chops. So if you're going to do more, like double it. And I've done that too. Like especially when my oldest is home from college, and there's five of us here eating, then I will make more like eight pork chops, especially since, or even six, because, you know, he eats, he's a weightlifter, bodybuilder, and he really eats a lot of food and a lot of meat. So I really bump up the food when he's here. And so this one, you take one fourth cup salad oil, salad oil. What does that really mean? I usually use olive oil personally. Any oil obviously would work. One fourth cup soy sauce, two tablespoons ketchup, one tablespoon vinegar, one four teaspoon black pepper, and two cloves garlic. Now, I generally, it does say crushed, but I generally use the minced in the jar. You stir that all up and then you marinate it. It marinate the meat. It says it makes about three fourths cup. And then obviously you know how to marinate some, right? You just put it in like a container or a Ziploc. You put the meat in there and you want to get it all coated all over. And, you know, if it's a good thing to do is to like shift it throughout the marinating time so that it can all get coated on different sides. But that's literally it. And then my husband grills it. That's what we do. And it's just one of their absolute favorites. So try that out. And then we're going to move on to the, on to the mushroom. And 
I have this on my website. I think I, I'm trying to remember if I put it in the cookbook or not. I don't think I did, but I'm going to go over. So I'm going to go over to my own website, baby. Julie, if I could type on my phone, that would be good. JulieHogwriter.com. Okay, so then I'm going to search mushroom because I'm going to be reading it right from my own website. <laughs> I've done that in the grocery store. I think I talked about this before on the podcast where I'm like my own recipe and I'm like, dang, how did I make that? In the grocery store, literally, I'll go to my own website and be like, how, what are my ingredients? How did I make this again? So this is a portobello, like those big, big mushrooms. You know, those big ones, those big meaty mushrooms. If you're going to call a mushroom meaty, that's what it is. Ooh, I got to do this one. I got to mention this one real quick. I'm not going to read this one right now. Maybe I'll add it soon, but grilled Grilled salad with romaine and portobello mushrooms. Have you ever tried grilling lettuce? Ooh, I might have to do that for my next podcast. You can check it out on my website if you don't want to wait. It's grilled salad with romaine and portobello mushrooms. I didn't. I had never thought of grilling a head of romaine lettuce before. It's really good. So anyway, I made that. And then, um, okay, so I have too many mushrooms recipes on here. I can't find it. <laughs> I love mushrooms. Did you know that mushrooms give you a really healthy uh, libido and it really boosts your sexuality? Just just as a side note, eat mushrooms. <laughs> mushrooms and lettuce salad are the best for boosting your libido. Okay, jump to recipe. I love that app on the, not app, I guess it's a functionality of the website. Okay, this one, amazing marinated secret plus marinated balsamic mushroom cap burger recipe. Okay, so this is really something I found out on accident and I loved it. <laughs> Often that happens to me. I find out something on accident and I'm like, dang, that was really good. Okay, so what you need for this one is two portobello mushroom caps, large, those big, large ones, half a teaspoon of seasoned salt. I use Lowry seasoned salt. I'm a big fan of, of Lowry's. <laughs> I know there's other brands out there, but I'm a big fan of Lowry's, baby. And then one teaspoon jalapeno seasoning. Now, the one that I used had ground jalapeno, onion, garlic, and salt. So I'm sure other ones work, but that's what I used for this recipe. One half teaspoon black pepper, one fourth cup olive oil, and one eighth cup balsamic vinegar and one tablespoon chia seeds. Chia seeds, right. That's so weird. Chia seeds are bizarre, but they really, they really worked good. So I really, I don't know, for me, it felt like a secret when I found this. So it's, it works so well. The marinating trick is that it soaks up all the marinating juice and adheres the marinade juices to the mushroom. And the chia seeds help this. And chia seeds are actually really quite healthy for you. You can't really taste them. They're just adding benefit to your food. And so I marinated these portobello mushroom caps for almost two hours and almost all of the marinating juice soaked into the mushrooms like magic. And I and the seeds kind of adhere to the mushrooms as well. So this packs an enormous amount of flavor into these mushrooms. So marinate them, I would say, I think I did two hours. That's what I said, right? I'm looking back. I'm a goofball. What did I do? Two hours, I thought I said. So you add them to a bag. I did a bag for this one. So I put all the ingredients together and mixed it up in the bag. And then I turned the bag in all different directions, upside down to coat the marinade all over the mushrooms. You can use a spoon to cover the mushrooms in the marinade as well. I like to grab the bag and jostle it while it's marinating. So place it with the bag with the marinade and the mushrooms in the refrigerator for one and a half to two hours to marinate. And then you're going to grill it in, I think it's around 20 to 25 minutes, probably depending on your temp, until tender and you flip it. And then you add it to a hamburger bun with romaine lettuce, pickles, and make it into a sandwich or eat it by itself. So that's what, that's what this is. Uh, chia seeds, they're just, they're kind of like a secret that not everybody knows about. You should try them, adding them in. So I love balsamic vinegar. Have you tried it? It's amazing. My husband and I have done date night and we've gone to the, there's a uh, place in Stillwater and a place in White Bear Lake that has specialty oils and vinegars. 
And I'm trying to remember if the still water one just has a vinegar or if it has oils too. But they have these flavored oils and vinegars, and they're just amazing. We got one at the Stillwater location. I wish I could remember the name right now. And it was like an 18-year balsamic vinegar. Oh, it was to die for. It's a special treat you should try out. And you can go there and get their bottles. You can taste them right there on the site. And usually they'll give you a little sample. Before COVID, they used to have like little cups out there and then bread. But now I think you have to, last time we went in, you actually had to ask for a sample of it and they just gave it to you in a little cup, which COVID changed how they do that, obviously. Not sure if they'll ever go back to that or not, but you can taste it. And it's amazing. It is so good. It is such a treat. And it's amazing how there can be different flavors of the oil and the vinegars. So check that out for a date night. And then you can bring the bottles back to them. And I think they either give you a discount. I think that's how it works. So save your bottles for the next time you go back. When they're empty, they're so good. They're so good. If I... I just, I should, maybe I should look them up right now so I can tell you people in Minnesota what the names of these are. Not that you can't look online yourself, right? But so, let me see, Stillwater, it was Stillwater something. Stillwater I thought was in the title. Let's just try Stillwater Oil and see. Okay, Stillwater Olive Oil Company. I'll bet you that's it. Because it is on, oh yeah, I see a picture. That's it. <laughs> Internet is wonderful sometimes, right? So I can see a picture of it. And, ooh, it's making me go to, okay, there we go. And so I can see the picture of it. It's a really skinny little store. But Stillwater Olive Oil Company, and they have the vinegars as well. Okay, then let's get the one for the White Bear Lake. White Bear Lake one is closest to me. Instacart. Groceries delivered in as little as one hour. Free delivery on your first order, $35. Save yourself that trip to the market. Instacart delivers groceries in as fast as one hour. They connect you with personal shoppers in your area to shop and deliver groceries from your favorite stores. Free delivery on your very first order, over $35. Following the link in the show notes, let's Instacart know we sent you and help support our show. Multiple stores available. Shop all of your favorites on a single order. The products you love from your local stores. Hand selected by shoppers based on your preferences. Delivery to your door in as fast as one hour. Instacart highlights deals to help you save money. Don't we all want that? Find everything you usually buy and get smart suggestions for new items. Instacart picks the freshest produce and keeps your eggs safe too. Woohoo! Those are things I want. Try it out today. You will love it. White Bear Lake Olive Oil. And I'm sure wherever you live, you probably have stores like this too. And maybe you never even thought of going to one or you didn't know they existed. But they are totally a thing. And the olive branch. Is that what it's called? Yep, that's it. The olive branch and the olive branch oil and spice company in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. Yep, I can see the pictures. Thank you, pictures. That's it too. Confirmed. Okay, just so good. And you'll make it a date night or just go there for fun. I mean, what a great thing on a weekend afternoon or like when you're going out to eat or something. Plan on going out to eat in Stillwater or White Bear Lake. They have great restaurants. And you could stop in and get some of this oil or vinegar for something yummy. And I am not associated with them whatsoever. Um, they don't like pay me to advertise or anything. <laughs> I uh, I just really like them. So I want to put that out there. Okay, now we're on to the last recipe. And this is the fennel. As I said in the beginning, I used to think, oh, fennel, no way. Like it was like licorice It was like, blah, I hate it. And so <laughs> recently I tried a recipe from a, a cookbook writer, Lee Shishak. And so she, in one of her cookbooks, has this roasted vegetable dish with fennel. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to try it again. You know how sometimes you have a flavor where you're just like turned off to it? And I just decided to try it again. Try it again. You should do that too. If you have something where you're like, oh, I don't like that. Try it again. Find a recipe with it in it. 
and I loved it. And I'm like, oh, I always thought I hated fennel, but I loved it. So then that spurred me on to make this recipe because I'm like, oh, maybe I am a fan of fennel seed. So this is a tomato fennel pasta salad, and it's yummy. (laughs) I was like a child. I'm like, I'm not going to eat fennel. I don't like fennel seed. It's yucky. (laughs) But I'm wrong. I really like it. So you take 16 ounces of the mini farafel pasta. I don't know how to say that. It's like the little bow ties. I love those little bow ties for a pasta salad. They're just so much fun. So you get 16 ounces of that. And then two and a half cups of cherry and grape, different colored tomatoes, like the medley. Have you seen those in the store where like it's all these gorgeous different little tomatoes and they're like, oblong oval red ones, a little bit darker red. There might be regular cherry tomatoes in there, orange tomatoes or yellow. I love using those. So this recipe takes that medley and get two and a half cups. And I usually cut them in half, but if they're really big, I might cut them in thirds for this recipe. And then you're going to get one of those sun-dried tomatoes, julienne cut with Italian herbs, where it's like in with the oil. Have you seen those? This is an 8.5 ounce jar that you're going to use. And then you're going to use, hey, we're using Lowry's again. It's a Lowry's day. One teaspoon Lowry's seasoned salt and one half teaspoon black pepper and one tablespoon fennel seed. Use that fennel seed, baby. It's yummy. And then two tablespoons white wine vinegar. That stuff smells good. Have you ever smelled it? It's got the wine flavor. I don't know if it has. I think it probably actually has really wine in it, right? And then one and a fourth cups shaved mixture of Asiago, Romano, and Parmesan cheese. Key. I love to have that mixture. And it really melts in when you, the way I created this recipe, it really melts in there. And then the last thing you're going to need, two last things you're going to need, one cup of chopped onion and two cups of chopped zucchini. This is so easy to make. And then it can sit in your fridge if you don't eat it all because it makes a good amount. It can sit in your fridge for several days and you can eat off of it. And we do that. That's what we do all the time. And it works really great, especially when my, my oldest is home from college. It's, he'll go and grab some for a snack or something, you know. So how do you make it? We make it by adding the tomatoes, the cut tomatoes, salt, the pepper, the fennel seed, the vinegar, onion, and zucchini, and all the ingredients. Add those all together and stir that up good. You're going to cook and drain your pasta, and you add the pasta in that big bin. You're going to stir it. Well, I usually do the cheese last. So like I do the cheese, and then I add the pasta. And I do it while the pasta is still warm. So it kind of like melts the cheese into the mixture. So as you stir it while the pasta is still warm, you the cheese really just kind of like blends in. So you don't even really see chunks of cheese when it's done because it just kind of like all melts in there. And you could do it the other way too. You could add the pasta and then the cheese and stir. I've done it actually both ways. So once you stir it really good and coat everything, you're going to let it sit in the fridge for a half hour to an hour and then serve. And it's a great thing as a leftover. I love it too for like lunch the next day. Like if I make a big pasta salad and my family eats it for dinner and there's some left, what a fabulous lunch, a leftover lunch that is just ideal. It's already ready. It's perfect. It's so good. Great way to use leftover pasta salad is your lunch the next day. So that is what I plan to share today. I hope that you found it interesting and I hope that you enjoy these recipes. And a quick mention of Instacart, check out the deals down in the podcast show notes where you could try them out today. They have a great deal where you can try them out. And, you know, it's so great. If you don't want to go anywhere or you say you went to the store and you forgot something, they can deliver it to you. Delivery has become such an amazing thing in our world. That's maybe one good thing that COVID did was bring about all these wonderful delivery services that we didn't have before. So check them out. 
They are amazing. But thank you for listening to this podcast episode. I really enjoy chatting for you. I do have some interesting interviews with food bloggers and chefs coming up. So stay tuned for that. And you can check out my others that I already have. I have a couple of interviews up. Lee Shishak and then the one that was the dietitian, which I'm drawing a blank on her name right now. But you can go and I'm going to go right now. I'm going to go to Spotify. Where are you, Spotify? Come here, baby. There we are. And... You know, it's just so great talking to these people. I have such a blast. I love talking to people. (laughs) I really do. It's really fun. And I love hearing their perspectives on foods. You know, it's just, it's great. Vegetarians and meat lovers. Um, Okay, so I'm trying to get to her name. Here we go. She is Ashley Kitchens. Oh, yes. It was so much fun. If you listen to that episode, it's so funny in the beginning because I actually accidentally call her kittens. And then she's like, oh, I like that. <laughs> it's the funniest thing ever. I'm like, Ashley kittens. And she's like, oh, I like that. <laughs> we had we had a blast together. Anyway, she is a dietitian and she is now a vegan. And she shares her story, which is so interesting because she grew up on a meat farm. I mean, her, you know, she grew up on a farm and her 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 dad was a farmer of, of meat growing, I think, Angus beef, I think is what she said. So she has gone a completely different way in her life. So check those both out. Those are my two that I have live so far and more are coming. I'm excited. I have one scheduled for June and I have another one, I think, scheduled later in May. So those interviews will go live and then you can find out more interesting different ways to cook and different recipes. So many different things out there to find and it's a great way to enjoy life is making good food and enjoying the food. Absolutely. I love that because you can do that at any age, right? You can enjoy food at any age in any capacity, even if you're making something super healthy, you still can enjoy it. We have those taste buds and we need to use those taste buds, massage that into your life. All those lovely flavors. Okay. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode. Again, I will put all the info down in the podcast show notes because I want you to have easy access to those recipes instead of having to re-listen to me jabber on and jabber on and jabber on. If you want to come back to the recipe, you can. All you have to do is go back down to the show notes and you can see it. And what's so great, talking about finding things in the store, say you're in a store and you're like, oh, what am I going to make? Oh, I remember that podcast that has the recipes right in the show notes. You pull up Spotify or Apple or wherever you listen right in the store and you've got the recipe list for you right there. How convenient is that? I'm thinking about you. Yeah, I am. And that's why I do it, baby. All right. You have an amazing day. Enjoy your food today and have a wonderful, yummy day. Love you. Bye.